Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're on the Columbia River near Umatilla fishing killer fish for Spring Chinook Salmon. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. We're anchored up plug fishing for Spring Chinook and when fishing plugs like killer fish, size does matter. So what we got going here is we got these two straight out the back. These are all, these are 14s. I got one straight out the side here, that's 14. I run a 15 as I get to the shallower water, the slower moving water. I like to run a 15 out there. Um, we got a Magnum wiggler on that one. So uh, got it all nice little spread here and see if we can get something to come in. We got a, a point up there and we got a point right here. So those fish will come right in here to get out of the little bit more uh, slacker water, get out of the current. And there's like a shelf we're sitting on right here. And on this side of it, <clears throat> you'll see the boat all went swing over. It's a little bit more current. Over here, it's more slacker water. So in the morning, generally what will happen is these rods will go off. And as the flows raise, these rods will start going off later on in the afternoon. Those fish will move up into that more shallow, shallow water. And they'll come right up through here. It's typically what we've been seeing. Um, and <clears throat> the reason we picked this, this spot particularly is right back there there's a nice little hump those fish come right up over the hump and when they come back down our stuff sitting right in their face huh? yeah we just got bit just came off it was on the 15 d Achiever right there it's been a good plug for us he's still out there though we'll get him so we're running uh the anchovy mix for for pro cure we're gonna freshen these guys up a little bit with it See if we can get them to go again. Put just a little bit on and it's good to go. When I'm rewrapping these, I like to put that skin side out. It seems to hold more oil. And I don't have to put as much meat on to get the fish's attention, it seems like, so the plug swims a little bit better. This one here we're gonna do a little different. We're gonna wrap it with tuna. And then on the, top, the upper end, we're gonna wrap it with a uh, anchovy. Uh, so what we're doing now is just kind of checking and see what our flow's got going on. So midnight they shot it up, they dropped it big time, and now it's going back up and coming back down. Well, when they shoot it up and drop it like that, it really affects the, the fish and the bite. So I think it, my philosophy is it upsets them. So that would explain why we're not getting bit like we were on Wednesday. Fish oil! Yes! Boy Bradley! There you go, you're doing good, buddy. Fish! Throw off, bud. Yeah, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. This one was on that Deaver Achiever. Balloon green. There he is. Nice to see you, Oh. You can point the rock that way and down towards the water. He'll come right back towards us. Nice and easy. 
Good job, buddy. Good job, Brad. Good job, buddy. Let's line up. Keeper? Keeper? Yep. Good boy, Brad. Hey, guys. Good buddy. Good job, Brad. 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 Thank you. Good job. Keeper, keeper, huh? Every time. What do you guys It's the same color today? Yeah. That sounds about right. But that's been a hot color for us. Great. All right, let's see if we can do that a couple more times. Welcome back to the Columbia River. I'm Justin Wolf. We have our first fish in the boat on a Deaver Believer. Originally, we had this uh, with another hook right here at the belly hook. And that fish got wrapped up, broke the hook off. But we had them on the back hook as well. We like putting those barrel swivels in there so when that fish down there twists and turning, it just goes. We don't have to worry about it twisting itself off. So luckily Brad did a good job getting it in. So we got one. Deaver Believer, the 14. This has been one of my go-to money plugs for about 10, 12 years now. So it's been beat up as you can see. So the reason I like these killer fish is the majority of them we pull right out of the box, it runs true and straight. You don't have to really mess with them. You pull them out, you put them on, you check them. Most of them are tuned almost right on the money. I've got old, old quick fish that these things outfish probably five to one, 10 to one some days. And that's why we like these plugs. Different action, the fish, the springers seem to really, really like them. And so this here, instead of, what we got that fish to go on was just straight anchovy. And instead of running tuna, we're gonna run straight anchovy again and see if we can get a couple more to commit today. You know, it's funny, this color has been working for me from sunup to sundown. It doesn't seem to matter on the time of day. This, this one here has, throughout the day, will always go off. And we got, I, I've got about three of them I run, and they're all the same. They all look like that. They've been beat up. Got the ring of death going. They've caught in a lot of fish. And uh, they all seem to get it. So double wrap some anchovy on here and we're gonna send it back out and see if we can get one more fish to commit I just checked the water flows they're kind of mellowing out a little bit they're still messing with it a little bit but I think that's what's constituting our bait or our bites right now is that those flows are starting to kind of just mellow and the more they mellow the longer they mellow out the better we're gonna have opportunity they've been they spiked it really really hard last night and this morning and then shot it back down and I think that's why we've been having kind of a tougher bite this morning. This anchovy, we literally just thought out the package. We cut it, flayed it, and threw it right on the uh, bait. And they seem to be liking it. Um, if I plan on fishing anchovies a lot, then yeah, we will kind of throw them in a little bit of salt, brine, and um, toughen them up a little bit. But if I'm wrapping plugs, you really don't need to do that. So another thing I like doing is after a fish hits it, I always check the tune because I've had them to where they hit it and they burn it so much that it starts doing a circle down there and you got to retune it. So you always see me check it just before I dunk it in the water to make sure it's still running straight. I see you've got a lot of 14s here, so uh, what's your theory on 14s versus 15s versus 16s? What, what kind of water are you using 14s versus 15s versus 16s? Okay, so 15s, we typically I like to find, if it's murky water, right, a little bit slower water, we'll run the 15s. They're a little bit brighter, a little bit bigger, make a little bit more noise, and the fish will come up and most likely come look at them, which mm -hmm. we did get bit on the 15 well, once or twice today. The 14s, give a little bit more wilder action. 15's a little bit slower, 14's a little bit more back and forth. Erratic. More erratic, and those fish seem to really, really like 14's if the water's a little bit cleaner, even if it's a little bit faster. Um, we just seem to do a little bit better on the 14's with the springers. With fall run, we typically stick with the 15's. 
a little, a little bit bigger. Fall runs seem to like the bigger ones. We do get bit on the 14s, but typically the, the 15s and 16s. Now, a lot of guys ask about uh, rattle versus non-rattle. Yes. Um, when do you like to use the rattle? When do you like to use the non-rattle? The non-rattle I like to use if we're in a big pile of boats. Mm -hmm. The majority of people are running rattles. So I'll slip a non-rattle out there, and that's what we did on Wednesday, and that non-rattle went off two or three times. Gotcha. Um, the rattles, and, and, and I play with those, right? So I have been running a non-rattle today. It did get bit, but it didn't stick. Um, but the, the rattles sometimes are the way to go. Murkier water like that we got going today where they're messing with the flows, I think the rattle helps. Mm -hmm. The... Um, uh, if the flows are stable, the water's clean, I will slip a non-rattle out with the group mm -hmm. every time, no matter what, because a lot of times that will be the plug to go. And now how about colors? So we started off, it was, you know, is oh dark 30 is first light when you first threw your first plugs out. So what colors are you looking for very first light? So first light, I like to stick with either white, like the pristine, that's a, that's a good one early morning. Mm -hmm. um, the rotten banana, which we, I think we still got tied up over there. there. Um, darker colors, you know, golds, um, that spotted pickle, first light is a really good one. Um, we got bit on that twice Wednesday morning. Um, that's what I like running in, in the early morning. As the sun comes up, these, this bite has been particular on blues this year. Mm -hmm. So I've been running a lot of blues, a lot of different blues. The Deaver Cheever has been really doing it for me. Um, the uh, Scrapper, that, that's another good one. That one's been doing it good for me too. Um, so the, blue, the blues have been the hot ticket for me this year. We're fishing killer fish for Spring Chinook, where size, color, and scent are all important factors. The object is just to stand out, yeah. you know, whether it's a different scent. And that's what a lot of people fail to realize, especially with Springers, is they don't think outside the box. You gotta think outside the box and just stand out. You wanna put, you wanna put something out there that's gonna work, and it, it's not always gonna work. It's trial and error. Yeah. You know, I've had people tell me, you're out of your mind, and that was the hottest ticket. Mm -hmm. I just don't tell well, sometimes them. Sometimes those are the best things, though. Yeah. Still there? Whoa, whoa, he's, oh, yeah. he's gone. He's gone. Yep, he just dropped it. No. Yeah, we're going to try this uh, ghost thread right here. I heard it was pretty good. First time I'm trying it, so we're going to wrap up this guy and take a look, see on what it looks like, see how well this actually works. Good, huh? So far, I'm liking how it goes on because you can actually see the meat. I like wrapping the skin side out so it gives it more of a natural presentation to the fish. But yeah, that doesn't cover any of the color of the plug or anything. I actually do like that. Yeah, that's, it's a nice little handy container it comes in too. I do like that. So there's been so many times I dropped that stupid little spool of the other stuff and it just goes everywhere. Dave, when you finish that, do you tie a knot or half hitch? Just half hitch it. What I do is I do about two or three of them. So it basically makes a knot when I pull it tight. See the color of the plug and everything real good with that stuff. All right, Turvy, reel that one in. That's where it's going. Sounds good. Right I know. You good. You get him, buddy. So the reason you kind of want to get in a nice straight line instead of just anchor it up wherever is those fish are coming up, and they're all in different depths. And the object is is to get as many baits in front of those fish as they come through and kind of they hit a wall. So if you... Stupid catfish! <laughs> catfish. <laughs> That's what you get for not using a killer fish! <laughs> so, so, so anyways, uh, what you want to do is you want to, for the optimal for every boat, is to hit, a, for those fish to just hit a wall. 
if you have a boat here a boat here a boat over here like some of these guys do those fish just kind of come up and go around so you miss the opportunity or if you just have this wall that they just swim into every boat's going to have success down the line now granted some spots further out aren't going to be as good as this you know inside spots but they'll still get bit here instead of there the other reason you want to do the hog line is the minute you hook up you got a strong current in the spring like this you want to come off anchor otherwise there's a good chance you're going to lose the fish you're going to pull the hooks out you're going whatever's going to happen happen where if you take that stress off the fish from the current and it's just you and the fish you can fight it down you can net your fish and then you can come right back up and go right back and you're out of everybody's way you're you're away from the hog line and nobody's below you and if somebody is below you the optimal max is to be down far enough that when you do hook up on a fish you got plenty of room to drift down and fight the fish and get it and that's what you catch when you don't run a killer fish <laughs> hey brad wants the catfish Come on with me. You want it? Yeah, yeah. He, loves, he loves them. Yeah. Get the rods up. Get the rods up. Hey, don't worry about that. Just get the rods up. He's on top of the water. Oh, no. Did you lose him? Oh, no. No, he's still there. Don't you lose him? Is he straight back? Is he straight back, Chris? Yeah. Hang on a sec. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this week's episode from the Columbia River, where we're fishing killer fish for spring Chinook. Now, before we go back to the river, I want to show you the killer fish in a little more detail. Killer fish come in three different sizes, the K16, the K15, and the K14, in lots of different colors. So the, the big question there is, when do you use which size, which we talked a little bit about in the episode today. Now, it's not so much the size of the fish. You know, of course, if, if you're fishing for small fish for whatever reason, you, you might think a smaller lure is better, and that might be the case. But in general, king salmon, Chinook salmon, they're gonna eat any of these. It doesn't matter what size they are. So it's more a question of what's the water doing? How fast is the water moving? What's the current like in the depth? So in slower, deeper pools, the 16 is gonna be the way to go. Now, 15s are also used, a little faster water. The 15 can be very effective, and some people have a preference for that. So whether you're using a 15 or a 16, you know, you can go back either way. You know, when I was fishing a lot down there, I would have them both out all the time. And then the 14. Now, the 14 is a little smaller. It's gonna work better in faster, shallower water, typically. Or if you're trolling, that's a real popular size. Now, another thing to consider is whether or not to use a killer fish with a rattle or not. Now, rattles can be very effective, no doubt about it, but I'm a big believer that there's times when non-rattle is better. So, just to give you a listen, this one has a rattle in it, and this double up has no rattle. And late in the season, or when there's a lot of pressure on the water, maybe a non-rattle is a better way to go. I'm a big believer, in fact, I'm the one that talked Brad's into making non-rattle versions of this to begin with, so you're welcome. Now, let's go back to the Columbia River and see if we can't get hooked up again. We're almost 300 miles from the mouth of the Columbia at Umatilla, fishing Brad's killer fish for Spring Chinook. Guide Dave Jacobs has Brad Schoenborn and Scott Call from Brad's on board, along with his friend Chris Turvey, who's hooked up, but getting fit is not the same as landing a fish especially when plug fishing. Is it straight back, Chris? Yeah. <sighs> Hang on a sec. And now he is gone. What? Yep. You're not allowed to fight no more fish. That was gonna go. <laughs> you did the penguin waddle up there. <laughs> hey, wasn't that supposed to be Scott's fish, by the way? Yeah, okay, yeah. Scott, you can have the next one. It's all good. Same one. Oh, yeah, Deaver Achiever. Deaver Achiever. Look okay. at the teeth marks on that. That thing's been destroyed. Nice. So we like to see. How old is that plug, you think? About 10 years. About 10 years? About 10 years. About 10 years. The best day I ever had on the great snake. Great shape for a 10 year plug. Is that? Yeah, I've, I've been pretty impressed the way it's holding up. And it, 
doesn't help matters when, you know. <laughs> Hooks are nice and sharp. It's flashing. Go get it. Is this Deaver or is this Crapper? Deaver. That's Deaver. Deaver again. Deaver, Deaver. 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 Oh, oh. Oh. Wild? That's a hatchery, isn't it? That's a hatchery. Bonk. Bonk. That's a nice fish there. <coughs> Good job. Oh boy. Good Thanks, job, buddy. buddy. Nice. Hey, buddy. Thank you, Dave. Oh boy. Uh -huh. Same one. Don't, don't, here. don't break my plug. <laughs> <laughs> do not do that, please. Beauty. Thank you, Dave. Yes, yes. Oh, he's pinned. Look at that. Dude. Yeah, he wasn't getting away. He's got one of the jaw and one. Not even Chris Turvey could have lost that. <laughs> not even Turvey could have farmed that. <laughs> oh, that's not fair, Chris. Huh? Come on here. Is that fair? That's not fair. Dude, I only touched one, okay, guys? I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.